Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a speaker I want to tell you guys about. I've been listening to them for the last couple of weeks straight and they come in at around $1,500 for the pair. They are beautiful to look at. They are a bookshelf speaker and these are the brand new P300 models from Bucard Audio. Now, not so long ago, I reviewed the Bucard S400 Mark II. I love those little speakers for what they cost. I couldn't believe what they cost for the quality, the workmanship, the sound quality, the uniqueness of that speaker. I almost bought a pair of those, but I decided I was going to wait a little while to see what special edition of the S400 was coming next. But in the meantime, Bucard sent me their P300, which is the brand new model. I believe my channel here might be the first review of this speaker. Um, it's the same box, the same size, the same look as the S400, but the P300 was made to be more affordable while retaining a similar sound quality. There were only three changes made from the S400 Mark II to the P300 in order to shave those savings down, but I have to tell you, I've been listening to these in my system, and I'd say the sound quality is 90% of the S400, maybe 85% of the S400 Mark II. Um, Bucard says the only limitations with the P300 is overall SPL, how loud you can play them, but they make sure to tell us that the P300s can still play loud enough to damage our hearing. So there's no, I haven't been able to max out the volume capabilities in my 13 by 18 room of the P300. But today I'm gonna to tell you those three differences and I'm gonna tell you what I think about these speakers. Um, I ran them on the dedicated stands from Bucard, which are like a tripod stand. They are wood and metal. I love these stands for their unique look and design. Um, but I also tested them on a couple of other stands I own that are very sturdy and more traditional. The changes from the S400 Mark II to the P300, there's only three. Uh, they created a brand new paper woofer for the P300. It's not the same woofer as the S400. The binding posts are basic on the P300. They still work fine for bananas or spades, but they're more of the lower cost variety, something that Bucard had to do to shave those costs. Finally, the third thing that is different in the P300 is the crossover. The S400 Mark II uses a more exotic crossover, as in parts, right? Uh, more uh, expensive parts. The crossover in the P300 um, doesn't go for those exotic parts, but it still gets the job done. So at the end of the day, what does the P300 sound like? Now, it's a bookshelf speaker. Again, I have a 13 by 18 room. I do have a Rel S510 sub here that I used on and off with these speakers so I could tell do you really need a sub or do you not need a sub? Um, that review's coming very, very soon, by the way. Um, the P300s, when on their tripod stands or the stands that I have here, other stands, sound pretty much the same. I didn't find a difference in sound quality depending on the stand I use, so that was good. Another thing that just blew me away of the P300s with the P300s is the bass performance. These little suckers put out some plump, juicy, um, thumping, EDM-style bass if it's in the recording. These aren't going to make everything sound uh, bass-heavy. It's not like that, but they are bringing out what's in the recording. Now, I believe these go down to around 32 hertz from the speaker themselves. That's due to that big old bass radiator in the back, which is the same as the S400 Mark II. It's really a genius design, this speaker, and the sound is just overwhelmingly musical, rich, fluid, much bigger sound than you would expect from these little boxes. While they don't give me that huge floor-to-ceiling wall of sound that something like the Fleetwood DeVilles do, those are $20,000 speakers. These are $1,500 speakers. And what they give you is a nice, big, plump, juicy bass with a beautiful velvet-like mid-range. The mid-range is absolutely velvet-like. And the imaging on these speakers, when you set them up properly, is quite astonishing 
vocals come dead center out into the room a bit, which is how I love it. And you hear the instruments in the background in their respective spaces on the stage. So the sound stage width is very, very big as well. They're a little bit airy, so you get some of that holographic stuff going on in a pair of $1,500 speakers. Compared to cheaper speakers like Klipsch RP600, there is no comparison. These will slaughter those clips for tonality, for sound quality, for beauty, for musicality, for richness, right? The treble on the P300 is not um, forward or in your face. I just recently reviewed the MoFi Source Point 10s. They have a treble that's snappy, that's a little lit up, that is meant to wow you with those details. The Bucard P300, on the other hand, takes that treble uh, and it's a little bit softer, but it's very sweet. And when things in certain recordings are called upon that have high frequency information, I was stunned a couple of times because these sounds can jet out and sound three dimensional. Um, very, very nice sounding. Compared to my memory of the S400, um, I almost thought I was listening to a pair of S400 Mark IIs, but they sound a little smaller than the S400s and maybe not as tonally rich as the S400s. Um, but at the end of the day, Debbie and I were listening to these P300s and I just kept saying, I can't believe these are $1,500, right? I could live with these and I have been living with them. And I thought about just buying the review sample and keeping them in here for a while for a change of pace. Uh, something different, but I have all these speakers collecting here and uh, you know, there's so many good ones out there today. Compared to something like the Dyn Audio Special 40 that I really, really enjoy as well. Uh, the P300s are a little gentler. They're not as dynamic. Uh, the treble's not as crispy. Uh, they sound just amazingly musical. Um, they're not here to wow you with that intense treble. They're not here to wow you with overwhelming details. What these speakers, who these speakers are for, the P300, is for someone who doesn't want to mess around for days with setup. These are pretty easy to set up. It's for someone who wants to hear music and be able to play any music you like and have it sound really good and musical, right? This doesn't mean these speakers make everything sound juicy and plump and they fail in other areas. The remarkable thing that I've found about the P300s is they can add that weight and that fullness to the sound, which allows the music to groove and hit without a subwoofer, might I add. Um, but they keep that treble at just the right amount of detail to give you that energy and that three dimensionality. These are some of the most impressive speakers when I consider the price of $1,500 that I've heard in a long, long time, if not ever. I get to hear a lot of great stuff. Um, I really enjoyed those Source Point 10s. I enjoy my Fleetwood DeVille's like you wouldn't believe. I enjoy Dyn Audio bookshelf speakers. Uh, I recently heard a Harbeth P3 that I really enjoyed. These P300s though, they are an extreme value. And the reason you can get them for such an extreme value is because you're buying direct. As I mentioned, there's no middleman. So Bucard, they ship them from Denmark. Uh, you're able to buy direct. Now the P300s are shipped from Denmark, but they're made in Indonesia. Even so, I couldn't find any faults or flaws with the cabinet work, with the drivers, with anything. Um, I couldn't get them to chuff out in the base. I couldn't get them to overload. Um, they never sound hard or forward, no matter how high you turn the volume. They just bring more of that luscious sound that they are known for. Um, it keeps the same character of sound without question of the S400 Mark II. So another thing, you're gonna want a decent amplifier to power these. These are 86 dB efficient and four ohms. Compared to those Source Point 10s, compared to the DeVilles that I have here, these are a much harder to drive speaker. Um, I did test the speaker with the Passlabs 250.8 amp, which puts out 250 watts per channel of class AB power. Now it also, for if I'm correct, I might be a little wrong on this, from what I've heard and been told, the XA250.8, the first 25 watts are in class A. Um, and the Pass Labs needle on that amp only moves if you get out of class A amplification. So if you're pushing more than that class A wattage, you'll see the needle bounce. I've never seen a needle bounce on one of these Pass Labs until I powered the P300s. 
turning it up to dance levels where Debbie and I were in here really jamming and getting down, I did see that needle start to move as I turned it up, right? Um, so that tells me I was probably using 30, 40 watts per channel uh, at that loud volume. So you're gonna want some current, you're gonna want a decent amplifier to power these. But the good news is they sound really good uh, with everything I've tried them with. I tried it with that little Emotiva integrated amp and they sounded quite lovely in another smaller room. What size is your room, right? 13 by 18 here, and this is about a perfect size speaker for this room. They fill the room nicely. They offer fantastic imaging, some holographic uh, things in that imaging as well. They just sound really luscious and overwhelmingly musical. And I can play rock, metal, EDM, jazz, vocals, country, bluegrass, um, chamber music and they'll offer up that sweet, full sound. These are a speaker that anyone can love, and at the price of 1500 bucks, all you have to do is add a decent integrated amp uh, and some speaker cables and a way to get music, whether you're streaming or playing vinyl, and you will have a really, really nice system for a little bit of money. I can say these $1,500 speakers do have a high-end sound to them. They don't sound cheap or cardboard or hard, like some of the bookshelves under $1,000 today. I've heard a lot of bookshelves under 1,000 bucks. You either get a boomy bass to try to trick you into that big full sound, or you get a cardboardy type of flat sound due to the uh, mid-range being um, just kind of hollowed out. And sometimes with little speakers, you either get almost no treble performance or a little bit too much of an aggressive treble performance. These are pretty balanced. The mid-range is full, velvet-like, and sweet. The bass, you don't need a subwoofer with these. Let me get into that too, and the treble is sweet. Now, I was running them without the REL sub, and I couldn't believe the low end that I was getting in this room, more so than my Fleetwood DeVille's, more so than the Source Point 10's. And the bass of the P300's is full, and juicy, it's not loose or flabby, or, or flabby. It's, um, it's not super tight either, but it's just enough to get you, bring you that feeling, right? When you have just the right amount of bass through that mid and lower end, it feels musical and it feels full and it feels fluid. So they produce a really nice sound without a subwoofer. When I added the S510 sub, that reinforced the lower, lower part of the spectrum, which I only noticed in some music. I was pulling up bass playlists, right, uh, where there's really low bass, and that's when I really noticed it. Uh, so if you really want the lowest registers that you can get out of only some recorded music, you might wanna add a sub with these. Uh, in my room, I do not need a sub with the P300s. So that's pretty remarkable considering their size. I will say the sub, is magical with my Fleetwood DeVille's, uh, the REL S510. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful subwoofer, and that's from a guy who always disliked subwoofers and tune channel systems. A closer look here at the Bucard P300s. I wanna show you the stands. These are wooden. Uh, it's a tripod style. These come in two or three colors, I think three colors. There's a metal base at the bottom that these sit on, and there's gel pads that allow the speaker to float kind of, right? So it's decoupled from the metal stand. That's awesome. Uh, I really enjoy these stands, but I also like the other stands I have. I have some stands for um, some Falcon LS3s that are really, really nice too. But these just kind of have a look about them, a modern, cool vibe, right? So this is a new woofer compared to the S400. These are the cheaper binding posts, which Picard had to go to to lower the cost, and of course the crossover inside. But these do sound a lot like the S400 Mark IIs, maybe not as big, not as refined, and maybe these have a little more bass. I'd have to have the S400 Mark IIs in here again with this gear to really hear what these sound like. Now, Amplification, Bucard does make an integrated amplifier. I have yet to hear it or review it. I hope to soon or one day. And that could be a great match for these. And I just saw on their website, they give like a $500 discount on the integrated amp if you buy a pair of speakers. So 
I think the integrated, if you buy a pair of speakers, is two grand, which means you can get the Bucard integrated with room correction. These speakers for around 3,500 bucks. The stands are extra if you want the stands and of course your speaker cables, but that would probably be a really heck of a system. And the integrated has a DAC uh, built in as well. So the P300s are an outstanding value if you want my opinion uh, at the price. They have a lot of that character and flavor of the S400 Mark II, and they're really cool looking speakers. Uh, this is part of the magic right here in what they do with the bass. Uh, these are some of the most impressive speakers when it comes to bass performance that I've come across uh, in this size ever. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed my look at the Bucard P300s. Um, I'll have more soon. And uh, thanks for watching. I love you all. Feel free to like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. I'll see you guys next time. Market.